All right. Good after, Good evening, I should say. Good evening, podcast folks. Good evening, folks on Facebook. How you doing this evening? Can you say hey? Hey, everybody. How y'all doing tonight? Thank you again for listening in. Yeah, we got another one of our special guests. Yes, we do. We ask you to forgive our, our lateness, but you know, hey, whatever. We got Stuff a, does we, happen. We, we made it. <laughs> we made and it. And we glad we're here, and we glad to have you with us. Right. We got another one of our special guests. Mr. Royce Kennebrew, uh, Tanya's going to read your bio, and then we're going to jump right on into it. All Thank you. right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Royce Kennebrew, who was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. He graduated from Charles F. Kettering High School and headed to the University of Iowa. Royce received a BA in English Literature while also majoring in African American Studies. After returning to Detroit, Royce earned his Master's in Education from Mary Grove College and the program started to get more black men in the teaching profession. It was a teacher. I mean, he was, he is a teacher, a coach, an athletic director, administrator, um, and Royce cultivated his love for, that's what, uh, how Royce cultivated his love for public service. Thank you, excuse me, y'all. In 2001, Royce started a company called the Kennebrew Group to have a broader opportunity to help teachers, parents, and children. Mr. Kennebrew currently provides social and emotional learning, trauma-informed practices, and cultural competency professional development programs for educators and all other school stakeholders. Additionally, the Kennebrew Group provides, what, provides diversity and inclusion programs for the federal government. Some of the former clients of the Kennebrew Group are the Detroit Department of Justice, NASA, and the Department of Education. Royce is also running for the Detroit City Council at large. All right. All, All right. right, Royce, how you doing, brother? I am doing very good. Thank you for inviting me on the show and my tardiness. I, I must apologize. I'm trying to do too much. I'm a, I'm a slow down. I'm going to be my grandmama's son and just sit down somewhere, boy. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you get out there and do what you're doing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we, you. Since this is our show, we got we got a little leeway. <laughs> right. Ownership has its privileges. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We, and we thank you for agreeing to come on. You know, I, uh, so the people know, I, I saw uh, a presentation that the Royce did on Instagram about for Black History Month, and I loved it. So I immediately reached out to him and wanted him to share that with you on this show. And then when I saw his bio, I forgot about some of his other stuff he's doing. So we're going to talk about that, but so much more. So let's Absolutely. really jump off as we was talking before we got started. Graduated from Charles F. Kettering. East side? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. East side is, yes. Right around the corner from where I grew up. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 6101 Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah. And then you went to the University of Iowa. I did. The story is very funny. You know, my favorite NFL football team were the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes, sir. And I just recently found out that the coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes uh, called Chuck Knoll to get permission for the Iowa Hawkeyes to use the color and the style of their uh, uniforms for the university team. And so when I walked in Kettering and I walked into the, um, the counselor's office where the, uh, the college and career center was, I saw that black and gold and reached white right for it. <laughs> and that was back in the paper days. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, it had a stamp on the uh, on the admissions and a stamp on the housing application that made them free. And oh, you wow. know how we like free. <laughs> so, free tastes real good. Yeah, free is free is phenomenal. I mean, I like I like five dollars and two dollars, but free is exceptionally better. <laughs> I turned them in. I got accepted. Uh, I went on a visit in um, the summer in between my senior year and my freshman year and fell in love with the place. Uh, they offered me a lot of money and more than my, the Michigan schools were. So I went on to the Hawkeye State and ate some of their corn and got the education. <laughs> hey, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> you did a great right, job. Right. Great decision. So, 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 you know, a, a, a little black boy from the east side of Detroit, was it a culture shock going there? It was. Well, let me tell you, 
getting on that Greyhound bus with those two trunks that my grandmama, Mother Ruth Kenny <laughs> Brew of the Tree of Life Baptist Church gave me. Um, and I rode by that gas station that had those corn stalks growing up by the gas uh, mm. tanks. Oh, right. I said, what did I just do? <laughs> and it was a culture shock because the state of Iowa at the time was less than 3% Black. The campus was only about 8% Black. Uh, we had a group of maybe about 400 urban Black folk, you know, okay. Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis. Okay. And then you had another 300 of international Black folks. Mm -hmm. For those of your Native Africans, your Caribbeans, and things of that nature. Okay. So okay. it was a culture shock, but, but, but I got over it. <laughs> well, that, that's good. That's good. And well, yeah. I, look, I can't talk because I went to Western Michigan and it, it, it wasn't much different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the cornfields corn of Kalamazoo. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. So then you came on home. You got your master's at Mary Grove, and then and, and so that's an interesting program that you uh it was designed to get more black men to teach. And how did how was how did that work for you? Because that sounds well. Great. The way that it worked out is that there's a, you know, I didn't put all the stuff in my bio. I left some stuff out so we could talk about some yes, stuff. Sir. But mm -hmm. I was working at the museum, uh, the Charles H. Wright Museum mm -hmm. of African American History as a museum teacher right after college. And okay. I was on my way to law school, but you know how God has different plans than your plans. Yes, sir. <laughs> so his plans started to uh, expose themselves to me. And I recognized that I need to go back and get a master's degree in education because I had started doing public speaking and training at that point. And I knew that I needed some more credentials. And a friend of mine who I worked with me at the museum had left the museum and went into the program. And he told me about the program where you can get your master's degree and your certification all in about two and a half years. You, okay. you have to go straight through. So I didn't have no summers off or anything like that. I went straight through, got that uh, those credentials and then went into the classroom while I was doing the consulting at the same time. So I was, oh, I was really blessed and God laid it out for me and I just walked into it. Okay. okay. All right well, then. well, that's what he does. As he know. That's, that's exactly what he does. Yeah, especially, right. when, especially when the stuff we have no idea of, he heats you. Okay, don't worry about that, I'll fix it. Right. And so, and right. so, so then, you being busy, that's just what you do. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I haven't I haven't slowed down in twenty years. So you know I'm I'm I, it's like the Tasmanian devil always spinning around uh, somewhere <laughs> uh, 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 working. But you know, it, it's very important for me. You know, Dr. King has a saying that uh, the, the one of the most important things is what is it that you're doing for others, and mm -hmm. I realized. Uh, because my story is very interesting. I was one of the black undergrad students who uh, only 40% statistics say black graduate, I uh, mean, undergraduate students graduate in five years or less. Okay. It took me 10 years to get a four year degree okay. because I flunked out of the University of Iowa and was back home for a year. Okay. And I had an aha moment. I was making minimum wage. So, Amen. You know, when people talk about how important um, increasing the minimum wage is, I understand from experience. Right. And right. so I was working at Colonial Merchandise Mart in downtown <laughs> Detroit. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I remember riding the number 34 bus, the Gratiot bus downtown. <laughs> and I remember looking around at the faces of the brown and black people and the people who were, 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 were impoverished. And it was like this saying that the, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And that light was out. And mm -hmm. I pledged that day on that bus. I said, Lord, if you let me get back to University of Iowa, I'm going to find out what has occurred in attempt to help. And I've really been in public service some kind of way ever since then. Amen. Amen. All mm -hmm. right. All right. Good. I like that. I like that. Well, yeah, everybody needs to hear that story. Because like you said, you can flunk out, but you can pick this up back up and get back oh, out Oh, absolutely. There. 
uh, you know, a setback is a setup for a comeback. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to have difficulties. Yeah. The question is, are you going to allow your difficulties to define you or are you going to define your difficulties? That's right. There you go. That's right. All yeah. right, Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream and I woke up. <laughs> Look, I like that article too. Uh, you know, because yeah, now, now I'll tell you, I got to warn everybody, come on here. You ain't got no secrets from this one. Is that right? No. As soon as she gets your name, she on the internet looking for you. You know, man, you linked in anyway. Man, you linked That's, in anyway. <laughs> there it is. Listen, after listen, you Google me, you're gonna have so much stuff. I've been this, I've been oh. this is going into my 17th year of working with as a consultant for the federal government. Okay. And so, you know, I've been doing programs, you know, NASA, Department of Justice, ATF, DEA. Uh, ATF, I did a program for Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that print the money. Right. And mm -hmm. so I've had a lot of experience in Washington, D.C. And I would I would be working, teaching in the classroom. I would have a lecture in D.C. that would be a one-day assignment. I would pack my bags. I would leave from school, drive to the airport, fly to D.C. I would get to my hotel, check in, wake up the next morning, Calling sick. Uh, I can't come in today. I'm in Washington D.C. The programs were usually at um, at lunchtime. Right. So in, so I'll be done by about two o'clock. I'm back at the airport by three or four. On the plane by six or seven. Back home in Detroit by about nine. At home by ten or eleven. I'm up, Mr. Kitty Brew, in the classroom the next day. Good morning, students. <laughs> and I've, done, I've been doing that for seventeen years. So I've been All really right, blessed. Right, bunny. Be like, Listen, I hope you feel better, Mr. Kitty Brew. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm better. I am so much better. Well, yeah, I, so. well I, I tell you, I, I worked 30 years for the IRS. Mm. So, so yeah, I know, I know you, I know how what you did, what you do for them, I'm still doing it, is, is important work because Absolutely. the government needs that. And, uh, and, and the good thing about what you did, about your journey is that back in those days, was this pre 9 11? This was after 9-11. Oh, okay. I, my, I got, I was working at the museum on 9-11. Okay. And, and so was, when yeah. I got my government contracts, it started in 2004. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah. So it was right before, but the enhanced security had started. Right. And, uh, and so I had to do all of that. You know, I've literally been in the most secure buildings in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had a presentation for some security um agencies and when i tell you it's real in the field no. um what yeah. happened at the capitol wouldn't happen at them buildings right that's all i got to say no doubt no doubt yeah because you know, i was down there on michigan and third but uh I, that's mm -hmm. where i was when 9 11 happened at work mm -hmm. and, and it was funny I, i'm gonna digress just a minute i had just came home from dc mm. and i was staying at a hotel right at pentagon city so <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's where I stay. When I when I, okay. I love Pentagon City because I'm always City. in that mall spending yes, my little money. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, that's that's Ooh. cool. And back in the day, it was a, a flight every hour out of Detroit to DC. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so that's cool. So so okay. So you did the, the diversity thing with the with the federal government. Yes. Uh, and so. What did you see? Uh, uh, what, what do you see as a, uh, the fruits of that? Well, you know, first of all, America has a race problem. Yes. It is the original sin of America and systemic racism, whether it's in employment, whether it's in housing, whether it's in health care, whether it's in education, it permeates every American system and it also in, uh, permeates the federal government. Yes. And what I've been able to do doing cultural sensitivity, implicit bias, I did a program at the Department of uh, Education called Implicit Bias, bias. and Women's mm -hmm. Issues, mm -hmm. where I talked about how bias impacts women's ability to advance mm -hmm. at their job. Because mm -hmm. you talk about the, 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 the gender wealth gap. Listen at these numbers. For every, okay, a woman and a white man have the same job, same credential, same experience. If the woman is Asian, she makes 83 cents to his dollar. Mm. If the woman is white, she makes about 78 cents to his dollar. If she is black, 
she only makes about 63 cents to his dollar. If she is Latin X, she only makes 53 cents to his dollar. That means they have the same education, the same experience and everything. Right. So bias is something that impacts every area of our life. And I've been able to go in and present programs to help agencies combat that so people will have a better mobility in their agency. Yeah. And I've also been able to take that training as well and bring it into the K-12 space okay. as an educator and also talking about implicit bias with K through 12 educators because you know in 2013-2014 Obama's Department of Education did a study where they found out that if you are a black boy you are four times more likely to be written a suspension, uh, expelled, or given an office referral and a black girl was six times more likely wow. than her white counterpart to be given a suspension, expulsion, or office referral. Mm -hmm. So working in cultural sensitivity and an implicit bias, it helps decrease students being kicked out of school, taken away from their instructional time. So I did a presentation for one school that had about 500 suspensions the prior year. The next year they had 300 suspensions. So suspensions went down 40% right. through the social and emotional learning training that I did along with some of the things that they did in the SEL and trauma um, arenas as well. So it works, yeah. but more people have to know about it. Yeah, teachers yeah, have educated. to be mm -hmm. sensitive to changing what it is that they do. Right, right. And that, that's the that's that's probably the hardest part of the program is getting people to accept and understand and be willing to change. It, so it, it happens hey, to them. Yeah, in the words of the great philosopher Forrest Gump, that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, some people don't want to change, you know, and, and DPS, DPSCD. I think it is set around 70 plus percent of the teachers have 25 years or more experience. Mm. So that means you're dealing with folks who are upwards in their age and sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, and I'm not saying they don't do a great job, but there are best practices that come out in healthcare. There are, there are changes that happen in the law and, and the practitioners in the law and healthcare, they re-up their skills. Yeah. And so us as educators, we should do the same thing. And I've been blessed to be able to help some educators through that space. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So. So before we get to the other thing, so uh, what are you working on now in, in, in as far as that realm? Well, what I'm working on right now is, um, I, listen, I've been so fortunate to be able to pivot. Now, let me explain to you. I was working in a school last February 1 was my last, February, a year and some change ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I was leaving to expand my business and to, uh, get my political career started as well. Mm -hmm. And I had stuff lined up for weeks and months. Right. February one, I left my job. I'm going strong for February. Yeah. Come the second week in February, it was like, wah, wah. <laughs> and all, because I, what I do is in person. Yes. And so all those trainings, all those teacher professional developments, all of that stuff with the federal government all dried up. Oh, and so I've been lucky enough that before the coronavirus happened, I was working on taking what I do and putting it in an online course okay. and online okay. courses. And so I've started that process. I've launched my right. online course mm -hmm. for educators. We had one session. We're about to have a new core cohort in about a month. Uh, so that's what I'm doing in that space. And then I'm going to uh, release another class that'll be more to, toward diversity and inclusion for like HR professionals, uh, EEO professionals and individuals like that to, to help them in their organization so they can decrease uh, EEO complaints and HR complaints, whether it be uh, dealing with race or gender or disability or any of those things. So I've been able to pivot, create courses, put them online and also by having a strong social media presence to be able 
to meet people online. I haven't even started my LinkedIn process yet. You know, <laughs> I'm meeting people through Facebook. Listen, I was putting videos uh, in my different uh, educator groups mm -hmm. on Facebook. Somebody from Teach From America was like, oh, man, we want you to speak to our educators at yeah. the beginning of the year. Okay. So I did a webinar for Teach For America. And um, that's how I've been getting a lot of business and some of my old clients reaching back out to them. And then I have a uh, email uh, list of educators and other folks, mm -hmm. uh, about 4,000 emails. So okay. I work them emails and uh, every <laughs> once in a while I get a little juice up out of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing that you had started uh, to getting your online excuse me, getting your online virtual presence together before yes, this, sir. this thing hit. And, and, and that's that's another testament to God providing for us Guiding or, or you preparing that us when we not right. we don't realize what he's preparing us for. Right, exactly. Because this COVID thing messed up a whole lot of stuff. It messed up. One of the statistics that was crazy was that many people, a lot of people that had degrees their life virtually didn't change at all because a lot of them were able to go to work from home. But certain peoples who uh, were, were first line uh, first line workers and mm -hmm. essential workers, mm -hmm. right. a lot of them lost their job and a lot of the, those folks uh, disproportionately are ones that died from the virus. So I think back to, you know, my, my Sunday school teachers jumping out. I'm thinking about how Joseph Mm -hmm. went in front of his brothers to prepare the way for the famine that was going to happen. That's right. And so the situation of me learning about uh, online courses was the Joseph going before the famine. So when the famine happened, you know, even though I did see the back of the refrigerator a couple of times, right. uh, <laughs> I did, it didn't get totally empty. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes we need to see the back of the refrigerator, sure refrigerator so to keep us grounded, Ooh. if you will. Well, I was on the ground, Doc. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that you know, I always, always got to throw my story in. You know, I, re I had re was, was retired when that happened. And before I retired for the last two and a half years, I worked with the government. I worked from home. I wow. Worked, I worked from home four days a week. Oh. And so if I'd have still been working, it wouldn't, it would have been business as usual for me. Yeah. It, but, it, but the thing, the funny thing is, is that I work more now than I did when I was working. <laughs> you know, Listen, it has opened up an avenue. People say now, there's a lot of people who were able to go into places and do uh, on-site webinars and on-site trainings, but the number of those people have decreased to those that are able to use technology in a way to, first of all, to be able to uh, find their clients to be able to procure the work and provide the service via, I was speaking with another presenter and he was telling me, he said, Royce, I'm as busy, I'm busier now than I've ever been. And I was telling him, you know, the things are heating up for me as well. So, yeah. you know, we've been fortunate. We've been yeah. fortunate. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Bless. Right. And, mm -hmm. and you got to keep preparing yourself for, for what's coming down the road. So, yes. So on this subject, you got another question on this, on this subject. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, because so we're gonna we're gonna pivot right now. Let me see what we at. Oh, let me do this before we get in before we get into into the uh, the, the the nitty gritty thing. You see the title of the show? It's things my mother never told me. Uh huh. You know what that means? Uh, there's a book by that by that title. Yeah, I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was this was, an, this was an epiphany I did I that I even came up with this title, but okay. but we we asked all our guests, you know, because looking at your story. And you talked about grandma a lot, right. so I don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know your, you know your, right, your family thing. Well, but, but was there anything that your mother did not have opportunity to share with you that you found that you discovered through your life journey? Well, I'm gonna tell you this, and I get it fits right into the story. My mother uh, suffers and uh, and and was stricken with mental illness when I was in middle school. Okay. So it was a lot that my mama didn't tell me. I yes, was pretty sir. much raised by Mother Ruth uh, Alberta Kenny Brew of the, Mich of the Tree of Life Missionary Baptist <laughs> Church. And so uh, my mom, though, was extraordinary for the time that she had her faculties because she taught me one of the things that my mom did. She made sure that I was a reader. Okay. And that probably 
is the most important skill that she taught me um, was I was we were always literate. You know, I was reading at an early age, had mm -hmm. a, a very high uh, vocabulary tested very high back on that California achievement test, the cat yes, test, right? Yes, yes, back that DPS had back in the day. <laughs> and I always tested high. And that's why as a, a public official and someone who's going into the political arena, one of the things that we need to recognize is that there is no coincidence that 50% of the people that are in jail can't read. Right. 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 Is that right. when your literacy skills are not developed, it cuts off your opportunities oh, yeah. in your yes. life and you have to turn to things that aren't good mm -hmm. that lead to a life uh, that uh, had can carry some serious consequences. Right. And so that's what one of, my, one of the things my mom did. She 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 made sure I was literate. But one of the things that she didn't do. And my grandmother either. I did college, literally the application process, the ACT, the SAT, all of that stuff on my own. I am a first generation college graduate. Okay. Okay. And so none of them, Congrats. I mean, they couldn't tell me anything besides, baby, I'm going to pray for you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I and thank them it, for that. Yes. And it worked and it yes. helped. Right? It helped. It, That's right. What it did was it put me, those prayers, I believe, put me in the position and in, in the spaces of people that could help me. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I think ha happened. But, but you know, there were a lot of things. Because listen, going from Detroit's east side to Iowa City, it was a culture shock. They couldn't yeah. they didn't tell me nothing about what I was about to experience That's dealing right. with different uh, cultures, different nationalities, mm -hmm. um, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So uh, that was something like that. And then also, you know, my dad, he passed when I was uh, in my 30s, but, you know, he didn't live with us and we didn't have a strong relationship to a lot of the man stuff. I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I you know, Thank God I ain't been hitting the head with too many rolling pins, but you know there are certain <laughs> lessons that I had to learn the hard way in regards to interaction with women and dealing with self-esteem and oh, all yeah. of that oh, stuff. Yeah. So oh, yeah. those are oh, things yeah. that you have to deal with, especially before you decide that you want to get into a relationship. Because yes, two halves don't make a whole. No. Two holes make a whole. That's right. Yeah, there that's, you go. That's right. There you go. Because two halves make a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, they may be the same half. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you got a real big problem then. <laughs> um, so the uh, so everybody wondered if they haven't seen it. The the, uh, the thing that I saw, you did a thing on the uh on the African slave trade. Mm. Uh, if you could go into into that a little bit, you know, it's black history. I will. So we need to talk about something that we can chew on for the whole year. Yes. Yeah, well. So. One of one of the things that I do is I try to demystify the transatlantic slave trade and to give more complexion to it, mm -hmm. because the reason that America, in my opinion, has a race problem is because America is like a bad alcoholic or a bad drug addict. They refuse to admit that they have a problem. Yes. They want to twist the facts. Yes. And what I like to do as an educator and as a trainer is I want to set the record straight. All right. And All right. some of the things that people need to know about the slave trade, one is, is that there were successful, intelligent uh, traditions in kingdoms in on the continent of Africa prior to the slave trade. Right. Whether right. you're talking about uh, Great Zimbabwe on Western Africa, you're talking about South African uh, kingdoms or Sol uh, Songhai, Mala, uh, Mali and um, Ghana on the uh, western coast, Timbuktu, Jene, the, the educations of higher learning are where Europeans came to right. prior to the slave trade to study and then took that information back to Europe. Um, Black Muslims called Moors brought yeah. the first right. university to Europe to Cordoba, Spain, when they conquered it. Whenever you go to Italy or Sicily and you see those dark Italians, the reason why they're very dark Italians and Sicilians is because they mix, That's right. Right? That's right? Because for 700, 800 years, black Muslims uh, had controlled Southern Europe 
and mix the people, but they brought chests and bathhouses and ways to get human waste outside of the city. And they also brought libraries and institutions of higher learning. Yes. So before I talk about the slave trade, I always like to talk about the success of African people and why did Europeans go down into Africa? They went down because during the age of enlightenment, during the Renaissance period, you know, Michelangelo, Galileo, uh, Gutenberg with the press and the printing of the Bible, they started to recognize that it called the age of reason. Mm -hmm. And they thought they got really smart. You know, whenever you can draw a painting with your finger almost touching the finger of God, then that means you think you kind of smart. That's right. Uh, and so <laughs> they looked at the world as a place then to dominate instead of living in harmony with. Right. And, and at the same time, they were sending Europeans uh, explorers into the continent of Africa. And what they found many times were kingdoms that were filled with people who had an oral tradition, who had griots or storytellers in the community who would tell their stories uh, uh, through uh, the, the history of their kingdom through stories. And when Europeans saw that, they said, well, they're not literate because they're not writing it down but the brother can remember five dictionaries, that's even more incredible. Right. And so when they took people from Africa, they brought them to Europe and they started sending people uh, over to the new world and African people had always been with them. And then they saw that in the enslavement process that servitude for indentured servitude would not work for whites. Because if you went to another settlement, you spoke the language, you could blend right in. Right. It didn't work for Native Americans because Native American women were the ones that did the agricultural work, but the European slavers got the Native American men and the diseases killed off Native Americans. Right. But right. African people, first of all, had agricultural skills that were useful in the slave trade. They knew how to group peanuts. They knew how to grow indigo. They knew how to grow rice. They know how to take care of cattle. And so they took those people and moved them to direct regions in the Americas that would help them to raise those cash crops. Mm. The average age for a person captured in the slave trade was 13 years old. So you talk, so you look at Africa now and people will say, well, those Africans, why they got all them problems? Well, if you take the strongest, right. the smartest, the people with the most potential, and you take 10 million of them out of the continent, you deposit about one to two million of them in the ocean from debt, you are going to depopulate a continent. And then after the slave trade was over, they had what's called the Berlin Conference in 1888 or 1884, 1885, mm -hmm. where they said, what part of the continent of Africa right. do you right. want to right. own? Right. And they just split up the continent. That's like somebody coming in your house and said, mm, this is a nice refrigerator, I'll have it. <laughs> you know what, this oven right. is good, I like this, I'll have this. Right. And the upstairs, I'll just take control of that. That's and right. they took the resources, they changed the, 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 the natural lines because kingdoms had always been there, tribes had always been there, and they had natural lines of demarcation. So the Europeans came in and started changing stuff. And then you will have a uh, independence date in on the oldest continent on the planet of being in the 1960s, <laughs> where Africans got a chance to control their own countries and they left a mess. Yeah. And so those are the problems that you see. But when those people were taken over, it wasn't like just the Amistad. You're talking about 20 to 30,000 slave ships leaving from as early as 1501 to the last slave ship going to Brazil in 1888. Mm. And that's why mm. you have more black Brazilians in Brazil than you have black Americans almost twice as many and they look like us they cook like us they love the drum like us and we have a lot of similarities but the institution of slavery was about money it was about making it it was about keeping it 
It was about writing documents, uh, instituting systems to make sure that I keep my money, I keep my power, and that we always have a servitude class of people in this country. And the laws were changed to make that happen. Right. And that's what the slave tree was. When I talk to people and tell them, um, people like to say, well, Royce, why are you talking about the slave trade? The slave trade was over 160, 170 years ago. I said, well, the money's still here. Right. The company's still here. Lawrence of London that right. participated in the slave trade, they're still here. Yeah. And uh, several attitude. insurance companies like uh, Chase Manhattan Bank, uh, by another name, participated in the slave trade. Um, and the life insurance company participated in the slave trade. And there are several other companies uh, that participate that are still here that everybody know what compound interest is. But when we want to talk about reparations, you try to act like you don't understand the concept. The concept <laughs> is this. You had me work for free 200 years ago. Where's my money? Where's my interest? You want to give it to everybody else. So the idea of reparations is always one that is at the forefront and relevant for me because you, reparations were given to Jewish folks in Germany. Uh, reparations were given to Japanese that were in turn during World War II. Right, and preach. reparations were even given to some black folk uh, uh, in Rosewood for what occurred there. So the reason why people don't wanna have a serious discussion about it because what amount of money can you give yes. black people for what have they have endured in the slave trade mm. and, and because of slavery and after slavery is 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 a number that people cannot uh, fathom so they don't want to have even had a conversation right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and and then and then they they don't want to have a conversation nor do they want to even admit that what happened is they want to say well that wasn't me it was my ancestors but then you hear about uh after this election down in at, down in georgia they're trying to change the election laws again. There are 33 state legislatures that have started to decrease the uh, ability to vote in their state, whether it's with ID laws, whether it is with um, uh, stopping uh, mail-in voting and right. absentee balloting. And it's because if they they know that they are a dwindling population yes and they know that the other side is an increasing population yes and the only way that they can win is to cheat it That's is right. not to change policy that incorporates everybody they said no we're gonna cheat because we want to mm -hmm. have the majority of the control and the majority of the power and we don't want to have policy Ooh, that, speak, in, speak, that are speak. inclusive for folk we just want to be in control and uh, we're going to lie. Right. And one of the things that I say is that uh, Republican leaders lie better than Democrats tell the truth. Yeah. And that's a problem because when um, President Obama was doing some fantastic things, they were not in control of messaging. Right. And so, for instance, you would uh, interview somebody and, they were, and you would ask them, so how would you like to have your child on your health care until they're 26 and they will say well yeah that sounds great he says how would you like uh to ex uh, have pre-existing uh conditions protected in your insurance policy and they say whoa man that sounds good and they say well how would uh you also uh like uh, a, a few other things that are that, that are important in this bill and they say well wouldn't we like this he says, well, what do you think about Obamacare? He said, well, we don't like Obamacare. We don't like Obamacare. Yeah. He said, well, those are the things that were in Obamacare you just said you liked. Right. And exactly. it was because the Obama administration was not good at messaging and telling their stories. But the thing about this administration, they learn from not being able to message well. And that's why you always see Joe Biden. He's always on TV. He's always talking because he wants to keep the record straight because lies have done a big disservice to the right, country. Right, right. Well, you know, it's the, the, the biggest thing they did with the Affordable Care Act was they allowed them to call it Obamacare. Yeah. Because because they had already put the message out that we're going to make sure this president does not succeed in anything. So if you put his name on, on if you change it from the Affordable Care Act to Obamacare, now that base, they don't like Obamacare. 
but that's the affordable, right. but the affordable care act sound like you just said the affordable care yeah. act that sound real good to mm. me. That sound good to me. Oh, that sound good. And so here's another one. Here's another. See, one of the things that Republicans are good, they're good at messaging. So they're good at telling stories. Oh yeah. So now they have a term out that they have people using called cancel culture. Cancel yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. Now listen, cancel culture is they may create a word. They demonize it and they disparage anybody that uses it. But right. what quote unquote cancel culture is, is accountability for mm -hmm. your actions. Right. Mm -hmm. And exactly. so they want to disparage you from making people accountable by making it a dirty word and calling it cancel, yes, culture. cancel culture. I don't mm -hmm. use the word. You're not going to make me say cancel culture because it don't exist. You made it up. Mm -hmm. You gave it its meaning, you gave it its power, and you want me to use it so you can have control over my mouth and over my mind. It's not going to happen, buddy. Not gonna I don't know happen. about no cancel culture. Mm -hmm. I do know about accountability, right. and I know about you lying. How about that? Mm -hmm. right. right, because yeah. it, didn't, it didn't happen until they started getting caught in their lives. Yes. And now it's cancel culture. Now it's cancel this culture. This is ca you cancel yeah, they culture. they cancel me from this. Cancel well, me from that. If, if, right. if we can digress just a second, what about the whole thing with the with the problem with the uh, power in Texas? Mm. They wanted to blame oh, uh, Ocasio Cortez for that, her Green Deal, which isn't even in effect, and 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 the policy that she that they, she talks about only account for what the the, the, the windmills the and turbine. all that. Wind the turbine turbines. only account for seven percent of the energy and all of your other stuff is what went bad. Listen, I'm glad you brought that up. First and foremost, the Green New Deal is like the I Have a Dream speech. It is a proposition of what we want to have happen. Right. It has not been instituted. Exactly. What the Republican Party was able to do was to demonize the term, the Green New Deal make up lies about it, disparage it, and disparage people who said it. Now, if you ask anybody that say something negative about the Green New Deal, the first thing you need to ask them, have you read it? Right. And I'm going to tell you what they're going to say. Well, no. But they say, who is they? I need you to ask yourself, have you read the document? And I read the document. And there's nothing in the document that aligns with what people say about the document. Right. The Green Do Deal had no bearing about what happened in Texas. What had happened was, <laughs> is that there are two power grids. There's an Eastern power grid and a Western power grid. And Texas decided that it wanted to make its own oh. power grid so that it would not have to uh, succumb to a uh, federal regulation. Right. And so when it did that, it set up literally smoke and mirrors. Uh, they had a problem 10 years ago. They refused to winterize Republicans in the state legislature and state government did not make it necessary to winterize. And now the chickens have come home the roost. You got people for one week getting um electricity bills for ten thousand dollars right. for one week for one week for one week and then they're they gonna try to blame it on the green new deal which is like the i have a dream speech from somebody in new york that's not in play it's because they are good at messaging yes. and they lie better than we tell the truth that's why so many times whenever i see it's a mess. I have to immediately address it yeah. because you don't let it fester and because it'll grow because a, a political strategy, even if it's a lie, if you say it enough, people will believe. People it. Believe oh, yeah. It. And so you have to address it immediately. What's this a bunch of crap like it's been a bunch of crap? We, we, we've been through it for the last four years. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I like how you uh, you um, wrote all these articles on stuff that's happening right now. Absolutely. Get it out there. Yeah. Absolutely. I right. sure have. Right. I sure yeah. I've been blessed. Right. right. Yes, and like, yes, and like yes. You said the Democratic Party, you know, one thing they have to do that has to be done is that you got to press forward with trying with holding people accountable, regardless of whether it succeeds or not. Because True. the minute you start giving letting them off the hook, they're gonna keep on they keep off doing the, it. They yeah. keep on doing keep, it. Yeah. That's what they've been doing for the last four years. Absolutely. When there is no accountability. When there is no penalty for your behavior, what you are implicitly saying is 
Thank you. I like that. Why don't you do that again? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. That's right. That's when right. there are no penalties. Yeah. Right. That's why in, in as when I teach a classroom management, I tell teachers, if you do not have a consequence for bad behavior, you are saying to the child, thank you so much, little Jimmy. Why don't you do that again? Right, right, right. And and and, and take it out of the classroom. Folks need to remember that at home. <laughs> yes, sir. Make sure little yes, Jimmy sir. understand it before he go to school and do something stupid. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so. I like what you just said, and I, and I hope folks is uh, 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 getting in on that. You got a, 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 a website or something that, that we can put out there for people to know? Absolutely. Uh, I have a I have a couple. I have one that is uh, my name, which is mm-hmm. RoyceKennyBrew.com. Uh, and then I have another that is the rdkgroup.com mm-hmm. and then they can find me on the social on all the social media platforms by either typing in on my name or typing in Royce teaches okay sweet yep. mm-hmm. yeah I hope Brandon's got all that <laughs> 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 right so so what's up next for you I already know what I'm gonna ask you well absolutely well what's next for me is um, I have people out now who are getting um, my signatures that I'm going to turn into the um, down uh, down to uh, the office, the elections office pretty soon. I've got all my buttons, got all my literature, got all that stuff. So I'm ready to rock and roll in regards to the election. So I'll be out actually this weekend. Uh, the temperature is up in the 40s and we might get a 48, 50 degree day, you got to take advantage of that type of opportunity. So I'll be out uh, meeting Detroiters, telling them, listen, uh, I want to impact education because education impacts jobs. I want to impact jobs because jobs impact crime. And then we can get down deeper Mm -hmm. into it so that they understand my platform. I tell people that Detroit has a population problem. If you once had 1.82 million people and you now have less than 70, 700,000, that means that you have lost maybe 60% of your population. And a lot of the issues we have is because even though we've lost the population, we haven't lost the territory. Right. And so the money that's generated by 1.82 million is different than the money that's generated by 670 or 680,000. So the tax base Mm -hmm. is in way that we pay policemen, firefighters, EMT, some teachers, snow removal, keeping the lights on in the communities, tearing down houses. We don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And so you have to understand if we want Detroit to change, we have to create a Detroit where we bring people into more spaces than just Midtown and downtown. Yes. And we do that by bringing in families, but families won't come if they don't think that their child can get a good education. It right. just won't happen. That's right. Right? right. You might have some single folks that ain't trying to have no kids, mm-hmm. but you want to bring in mama, daddy, the uh, uh, little Susie, little Jimmy, the dog, the cat, and the fish. <laughs> that's right. You do. That's, that's yeah. right. And that's so, right. And so that's the way that you do that. So that's how the Lord to- create disciples, families. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how he does it. So in regards to education, what we have to do is make some serious training investments in K-12 education where we implement social and emotional learning with trauma-informed practices because that has been found, whether it's been in LA, it's been in uh, Denver Public Schools, uh, Brockport uh, Public Schools, that it has decreased the amount of suspensions and increased the academic achievement. All right. Mm-hmm. Also in education, we have to upskill and reskill people that have been mis- uh, displaced, whether it's through the shrinking of the auto industry or just losing their job. You know, we have people here that want to work, but they don't have the skills. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And, and, and so the, and, the, and the last thing, which is the really the Detroit's dirty little secret is the functional illiteracy rate. Thank you. There Thank are you. over 40 percent of people in the city of Detroit are functionally illiterate. How are you going to prepare yourself for the jobs of the future if you can't read? Mm -hmm. And so we have to create opportunities 
for people to do that in settings where they're not embarrassed, where it is a healthy, where it is a nurturing environment where they can learn how to read and be successful. Right. So that's just a little bit of the stuff in regards to what I want to do uh, on the city council and raising my uh, profile uh, going into politics. Right. And you know, the other Ooh. thing about that, that illiteracy thing is that that's the reason why so many of our older adults are victims. Can't read, don't know how to read. They just look at somebody, give them something and they say, tell them what's on it. And they say, okay, cool. And sign it. Mm -hmm. and, and now you don't have a house anymore. That's what I'm, yeah. That's how my aunt lost her fortune. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what I want for, for the folks that are listening to my voice, and I know that there's somebody that has a problem struggling reading. So I'm going to, it's a, it's a couple of different things that you can do. One thing is that you can go out and buy a book. You can go to YouTube and a lot of books are on YouTube right. mm -hmm. that are read aloud. Yep. You can open up the book in your hand and you can listen to the reader read you the book while you're going on with it, uh, while you're turning the page and looking. And you can teach yourself to read just by listening right. and by looking at what word corresponds with what uh, words uh, that are that are there coming from their right, mouth. Right, mm -hmm. right. Coming from their mouth. And the other thing that you can do is right now uh, I speak a little Portuguese because I travel back and forth to Brazil. I, did, I saw that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I have Babbel, and Babbel uh, is a language learning software. But a lot of language learning software has what's called ESL. And it's English as a second language. Mm -hmm. It is usually for people who speak Spanish or Portuguese or French who want to learn lingo, who want to learn English. But guess what? Mm -hmm. If you don't know English, it could also be for you too. Right, right. And so right. you can, in the comfort and in the safety of your home where you won't be embarrassed, if you got the 10 or $15, I pay for a monthly um, a subscription with uh, Babbel cost me $87 for the year. Mm -hmm. And so that breaks down to like about eight or $9 mm -hmm. a, a, a month. Mm -hmm. And you can teach, you can use your cell phone to teach yourself how to read at least to a point where you feel comfortable then going out and getting some more training. Right, that's right. right. So and those are two things that yeah. you can do. Right, and even with that little bit, you become less of a victim too. Absolutely. All yeah. right, motivational speaker. <laughs> That's, listen, you got to listen. Mo listen, motivation is sort of like, uh, it's, it's sort of like uh, personal hygiene. It's done best when done every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I couldn't have said that any better. <laughs> you know what? I like your book, too. I was reading. I, I like that. Graduate, uh, moving um, from failure in the hood to success commencement and beyond listen it is the story of my life and and what it basically does is talk about how i failed my way to success i talk about see what happens is you will see a person and after they made it and you're like wow they're awesome mm -hmm. but they don't talk about what they've had to overcome mm -hmm. to get that awesomeness right. i think it was uh edison that said that he never failed one time, but he just found out 10,000 ways that something didn't work. That's right. <laughs> and so you use failure as a road and a path to success. And that's what I had to do. I talk about how I was kicked out of cast. I went on to Kettering. Um, I get, did, got, did much better grades. And I talked about what were the things that helped me be successful. So. I want people to know from the book that success is not a secret, mm -hmm. that it is that there that it leaves that, that it leaves prints, footprints and markers and guideposts. Mm -hmm. And if you do what successful people do, that sooner or later you can find success in your life as well. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing these things, I was successful. When I didn't, I went to the University of Iowa for three semesters, got that culture shock, and they kicked me out like I got kicked out of CAD. <laughs> I came back here to Detroit, got my mind clear, went back, got on the dean's list, Black Student Union president. Um, I, I even was one that would work with the university to get more 
uh, students of color at the university. And so I just talk about my story on how you may fail, but it's not the end. Mm -hmm. And that fear keeps a lot of people from their true success because they're afraid of losing something. Fear. They're afraid of failure or they're afraid of what people may think. Right. Mm -hmm. hey, you know, the thing is, is, is I like what you're saying. Uh, what one thing people got to get out of their head is that when you don't succeed at something, don't brand yourself a failure. Mm -hmm. you just just like like you said, just just take that as a lesson. OK, mm -hmm. it didn't work that way, mm -hmm. at least not for me. We had a absolutely. judge on here a few weeks ago. Oh, you know, he was talking about how he had failed. Uh, he, he, he was one getting ready to get kicked out of school. He had a one point something <laughs> GPA. And Which not, who was it? Yo, and all he name? wanted to be was a DJ. Uh, Kevin Robbins. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I went to school yeah, with him. He said all he wanted to be was a DJ, wound up be, becoming a lawyer, and now he's a judge. So. Yes. <laughs> but all he wanted to do be a DJ. <laughs> he said, wait Look, a minute. I need to we don't have a record. problem with you being a DJ, but what you gonna do when you ain't spinning them records? That's right. That's right. <laughs> but you know the thing about it, like you said earlier, if we we all got a, a plan. But if it ain't God's plan, it ain't gonna happen the way you think it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, and just like you said, when you went, to, when you got kicked out of cash, you came, and when you when you got when you got put out of Iowa, you came back mm -hmm. to Detroit. Well, you know, when, when Jesus got tired, he he retreated and went and went where he went. To, to regroup, to refresh, to regroup. renew, and then come on back out. Keep, and keep and, and, go, ahead, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keep, right. Keep moving on here with the mission. So, yep. And yeah. it's a principle of that there are always seasons. Yeah. There's always going to be a fall. There's always going to be a winter. There's yes. always going to be a spring. There's always going to be a summer. And our life goes through seasons. They're not they're not uh, time-based seasons. Your winter season may be three years long. Yeah. Your spring season may be five years long. But you have to remember that when you are in your spring and your summer season, what do farmers have to do? They have to plant mm. seeds. Yeah. What mm -hmm. kind of seeds do you have to plant? The seeds where you are helping other people be yes. successful. Right. Yes. So that when your fall and your winter season come, because it's coming, that's right. That's no right. matter what you think, no matter who you are, some type of way it's coming. That's and right. if you and if you have planted seeds enough yes. in your spring, in your summer season, then crops will grow up where it be somebody will see you the right person, yeah. where things will start happening in your life, uh, where uh, people will just want to help you. Right. Uh, those are the seeds that are coming back because there's a law to the universe. Listen. My grandmother had a ninth grade education. Uh, she 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 didn't graduate from high school, didn't graduate from college, but she'll say, Royce, what goes around comes around. Sure does. That's right. What you give is what you're gonna get. That's right, baby. Mm -hmm. And so uh those lessons are lessons that I learned and I recognize and I understand the, the concept of season thinking and, and preparing for the winter season. Right yes. now, I'm in a spring or summer type of season. And all I'm doing, planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds. Listen, I bought some Girl Scout cookies today. Me you know, too. I'm I kind of work out, right? Listen, I'm about to go down, tear them jokers up when I get through with y'all. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> uh, <laughs> I You listen, I, I bought like a couple boxes, but I gave them some more and told them to keep the change mm -hmm. because I, first of all, I don't want to have that much cookies around here because I eat them all. That's right. And That's so, right. but I look for opportunities to plant seeds, to be kind, to help other people in their vision yes. and in the things that they're doing. So when I need to draw out the bank, it's something up in there. Right. I know, because I told the uh, young girls when I was uh, buying those cookies, I bought three boxes and I gave them extra. And I told them, I said, yeah, I might not see you as an entrepreneur. I might not live long enough to see you, but I know right. you're going to get it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And, and you know, yep. it's funny that you said it, because one of our guests, uh, 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 she's a lawyer, mm -hmm. and she wound up you know, how, you know how we do. We think we're being uh, underpaid or under, underappreciated. And so she sure. had them give her more. Work. She wanted to raise and they gave her a raise, but they doubled her work. They gave her Absolutely. like a 10 percent raise and doubled her work. And then she wanted them to evaluate her, her, how she you know fit in the scheme of the, of the, of the firm. And they said, right. OK, we'll do that. And so in the meanwhile, she always said she always wanted to have private practice, but she wasn't really wasn't pushing that way. She said every step of the way, people were giving her stuff 
that would prepare. She had a CPA set up a, 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 a whole thing. Somebody did web design, set up a website for her. Somebody knew about some real estate, showed her how, how to get an office for a whole year and mm -hmm. only paid like for the whole year 25%. Cause mm -hmm. the first six months were 50%. The last six wow. months was free. And so right. all this was going on. Then when she went back to her employer two weeks later, they said, yeah, you, you great. You fantastic. But we got to let you go. Wow. <laughs> and and the place that she got was right down the street from her employer where she was. Working. Oh my goodness. She went that... right down the street with a laptop and started calling people on her cell phone. And then she, they had to call her back to finish her crisis. She took 86 clients with her. Yes. It's, it's, it's doing what you, you know, God is going to line it up. It's like this podcast. You see this this beautiful sign back here? Yes, I, I do. I told my cousin that we were doing this podcast, told him what the name was. He has a marketing company, 930 Marketing. And I said, mm -hmm. put something together for me. He put this together for me. And then he said, no charge. Damn. <laughs> so, Like I said, I love free. I love free. <laughs> I love free. And, and it's good that we, you know, that we, that we, like you, you say, in, in our season, that we planting, we continually plant seeds. We plant seeds, seeds. yes, And we when do. it's our turn, we're going to reap yep. a harvest that we, that we didn't even know exactly existed. Exactly. Because, you know, when the word says exceedingly abundantly above all Ooh. you can think or ask, yeah. you know, you know, we just, we do what we we're supposed to do. And then he's going to align with the scripture. He, the, the scripture's got, got to come to pass. That's you know, right. one jot or tittle not going to be thrown away. <laughs> it's all got to come to pass, right? That's right. That's right. And yes, so he, he has to make it come to pass because he's not a man. That What's the word say? He's not a man yeah. that, that he should lie lie. or a son of man that he should repent. That's so and that... I mean. Yes. Everything that he says, it has to come true. Don't so be making me shout. Have, I, listen, shout. <laughs> it <is. laughs> it's all in his plan, ain't it? Oh, right, it's okay. Plan. Say, look, this is our show. You can shout, you want to shout. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. in his plan. And so when you 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 have to position yourself yes. for his blessing. And right. people don't do that, right? Mm -hmm. There's stuff like, for instance, if somebody, if you didn't have a car and somebody was coming to pick you up, you can either sit there on the porch and wait for them, or you can be working as they're about to come and pick you up. Right. You right. can be straightening up. You can be doing this or doing that. So many times people are waiting, mm -hmm. but they're not waiting and working. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Don't tell the story now. Tell right, them, right. Tell Don't, them listen. It. Don't. Don't let me go put on one of my robes. I am upstairs in my house. I go put on a robe and come back. <laughs> you are so right. So all right. right. So all right. right. Yeah, but that's but that's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. We got to be Absolutely. we got to be working while we waiting. Yeah, yes. patiently be, waiting. Be prepared. Mm -hmm. it, it likes cleaning up, getting rid of the stuff that's in the way. Oh, so, so we got to make room for the blessing. Oh yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see, people don't understand. One of the things um, I think it was I think it was Jesus. Somebody else said, "Unless a seed drops and dies on the ground, you cannot have a harvest." Right. That right. means you got to lose something mm -hmm. before you get something. You, get you have something. to give something up before you get something. Right. And too many times, people want to hold everything they got and then think they're gonna get something. You don't have any room. That's right. You don't, you're not positioned to get it. That's right. What are you giving away? What are you losing? What are you letting go mm -hmm. of so that God can fill it up with what he wants? Right. And so that, those mm -hmm. are the things that I learned as you get, because you got to get older. You got to go through some stuff to see some stuff. When I was younger, uh, I didn't have a sense God gave a Bessie bug. And so I had to learn. <laughs> we didn't either. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, had to, I had to learn some stuff the hard way. Yeah. And so after you learn and you understand that wisdom, you take it, you learn it, you apply it. And immediately when you learn it, you got to teach somebody. Teach somebody. That's, that's right. what I. That's, that's right. right. That's why I was teaching my children about right. finances, all this right. stuff. Oh, right. you need this. Well, I tell you, I, I've had a ball. I have. It, it what was, do you do for downtime? What do you do? Eat, eat Girl Scout cookies. Eat, <laughs> eat some cookies. <laughs> work out. Um, I'm I'm big. Listen, my social media footprint is pretty <laughs> big, and so I'm always posting. I'm po I posting about. I may post in about 30 different groups on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, so I post on a lot of different groups. Um, and then I'm creating content right now. Okay. So uh, I am creating the online course because when I did it, 
the first time it was like on Zoom and I did it just like a class that we mm -hmm. met. Right. Now I am recording all of my lessons and putting them on a platform where I can be sleep mm -hmm. and the person can go on there and do their business. Sort of like a, bl a blackboard type of situation for those that are in college or just out right. of college. Right. So it's putting it on a platform. So I have to do that stuff. And then I'm, uh, there are two books that I, I'm working on. What I'm going to do with my book, the one that you have, is that I'm going to turn it into a social and emotional learning workbook. Okay. Because many children, uh, parents, and teachers are suffering from trauma, and social and emotional learning mm. can help them uh, get themselves together. So I'm going to take the book, I'm going to make it bigger, and I'm going to add social and emotional learning uh, lessons based on each chapter. Okay. And so I just got to do that rewriting, reformatting and all that business, mm -hmm. which I, which I pretty much done. I just got to get time to do it. And then the next part is for children that are in the third grade, I want to, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, uh, I'm formulating a social and emotional learning children's book oh, to help kids and their parents yeah. deal with trauma mm -hmm. because we have been severely traumatized. Mm -hmm. uh, children are committing suicide. Mm -hmm. They are using more drugs. They're drinking more alcohol. They're participating in more risky behavior. So we have to do things coming out of this tragedy to deal with the trauma that people are dealing with because it is impacting black folk, brown folk, and poor folk mm -hmm. and women worse than it's impacting everybody else. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. All right. Exactly. Well, uh, yeah, I, well, I see you're going to eat some cookies, take a little nap, <laughs> and, and then right. get back to work. Because I know That's you want right. to get that platform done so you can cash them checks while you're sleeping. Man, you know, <laughs> you listen, I like free and I like less work. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't have no problem with burning the midnight oil. I tell people, listen, I get me some Mountain Dew, cold red, and a Red Bull, and I'll stay up all night and do what I got to do. That's right. But if I can work and see what this is going to give me the ability to do, is work from anywhere in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to have the ability to do. Yeah. If you can create passive income on a platform where you just can connect via the internet and you mm -hmm. can work, that means I can do what I do anywhere in the world. Right. And so right. that is the goal because right. God has some things on the horizon for me that he wants me to do in some other places. And I'm just positioning myself. I don't even see it. I mean, there's some stuff that I'm like, what are you talking? What is you telling me to do? But I said, well, okay, I'm just going to position myself to do it and you work out the rest. That's right. So that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. Just positioning myself and just let him work out the rest. I know. How kind of God. How <laughs> kind. Right. He, that, that, that is exactly the thought. That's sometimes when I'm driving around, I think about you so kind. I know. Just to be able to order my steps and, and, and the thing it is, he says that the, the, if you want to please me, I, you can only please me by trusting me. Mm -hmm. Not by being perfect, I but know. just by trusting me. That's right. And then mm -hmm. it's so, if you got enough trust, he got enough blessings. Oh, so, I know. You ain't got to tell me, Royce. I'm telling you. <laughs> and when, I, and when a car just cut me off, I'd be like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You just... You saved right. me again. <laughs> right. Because if you had a caught that light when you was down there on seven mile, you would have been in the place where that car was going to be. That's right. That's right. And you don't want to be there. I was just, nope. I, that's what I'm saying. I just, I just love him. <laughs> I just oh, love him. Absolutely. All right. So, all right. We got our time. It's been fun. It definitely it's been is. Fun. Look, you got, I, you I got can go one, another 15, 20 you got, minutes. You got one you? little tip that you want to leave with the folks before we get off. Well, um, I think probably for me, the most important thing is that um, one of the things that Dr. King said that was so important to me, he said, everybody could be great because everybody can serve. Mm -hmm. And what I want people to understand is that no matter what level or area of your life that you are in, you're going to help yourself down the line if you can find the opportunity to help somebody else right. with whatever they are doing, yeah. whether they are suffering, whether they are, are doing well, uh, if you are blessing somebody who has a vision, mm -hmm. um, to helping them be successful, helping help be successful. somebody else do something that aligns with what God said that we're supposed to do. 
Mm -hmm. He says, love your neighbor as if you love the same way that you love yourself. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what I would leave with you. Find somebody to serve and do it as much as possible because it'll come back to you. Right. Yes. And, 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 I'll, and I'll add this to it because, you know, what I, I had to do a little, little bit before on New Year's Eve. God only wants, God only requires you to do, use what he gave you mm. to the best of your ability to use it. That's it. You okay, we better get off here for yeah. real now because yeah, I'm about to start shouting. <laughs> 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You don't want Damon to be Royce. You don't want Royce to be Damon. He don't want Tanya to be the one of us. He just wants us nope. to be the best us that he made us. And just like you said earlier, it ain't our job to understand God. It's just our job is to trust him. That's it. That's Absolutely. It. That's Absolutely. That's, that's what it. I believe. All right, that's it. It's been real. Ooh, thank it. you so much. It. Now you see why we waited for you. Yeah, oh, I appreciate it. I'm so glad you did. I'm oh, so glad you please. did. Oh, we uh, blessed us so glad much. We, did. we blessed Thank us you. so much. Yeah. And not to mention, y'all, you know, pick up I'll a book. Back anytime. If you have a, if you have a topic or something that you want to talk about, yeah. I'll come back anytime. All right. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good that to sounds me good. too. I, I got your name right. down. <laughs> Especially when that new book come out. Woo! Please. Yes. <laughs> All right. Brother, you All right. Take care. All right. All right. Just stay blessed. All right. Take care. See you, City Councilman. Thank you. Oh, call it out. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, y'all. Bye bye. Now, bye now. Yeah, before and before we get off for the for the day, I want everybody to know I'm gonna do this at the end of every show now. Go out to YouTube, type in things my mother never told me. Go to our YouTube channel if you've not already done that and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, just a few seconds. And we're gonna post a link on, on this on this uh on this podcast, and we'll be posting it every week. A lot of you have done it, but I want more. <laughs> Y'all take care. We love you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in.